Hello and welcome to Digital Marketing Masterclass Live. Um, as always, my name is Chris Carr. I am the host of today's show. And today we have a very special guest. We have Mr. Barry Feldman. Barry is the point man at Feldman Creative and is a digital marketing super freak. As founder and owner of Feldman Creative, Barry has over 25 plus years of copyright experience and he's a consultant in content marketing and all things digital. He is the author of a number of books, including The Road to Recognition, SEO Simplified for Short Attention Spans, and numerous other eBooks. As a popular guest blogger, he's been published by over 30 different marketing publications, and he's named a social media and content marketing influencer by LinkedIn. He's also recognized as a content marketing leader by Inc., Entrepreneur, CMI, and more. Internet, please give a warm welcome to Barry Feldman. Hey, Chris, thank you for having me. I'm excited to talk. Yeah, well, through the power of post-production, I've already botched uh, Barry's claim to fame. So uh, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I love the power of editing. Anyhow, so how I learned about Barry is, is that, you know, uh, almost, you know, one of our jobs with, uh, one of our goals with Digital Marketing Masterclass is to get the brightest minds in content marketing, digital marketing, inbound marketing, all, you know, all together on our podcast and just kind of talk through some of the greatest concepts and ideas that are basically transforming the landscape of digital marketing. And nearly everyone had said, you know what, you got to get Barry on the show. And um, I had always known Barry as, you know, as the guy who, who invented, you know, your, your website is the mousetrap and your content is the cheese. And I asked him before the show, are you ever tired of that? <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> well, it would be like, you know, ask him, uh, Bruce, if he gets tired of playing Born to Run, you know, it's like, uh, yeah. I, I suppose, you know, yes, but um, it's, you know, it's not a, it's not a concept that's expired. And uh, I guess, yeah. it, I guess if you know me for that, uh, you know, you're not alone and it put me on the map. So I'm happy to uh, yeah. talk about it. it. It was a post that I wrote for Content Marketing Institute. And then uh, uh -huh. the story continues that that uh, it was uh, sort yeah. of made famous by uh, Andy Cresadina, who uh, was my podcasting partner and uh, has uh, probably a little uh, more or a lot more audience than me. So they, it's often yeah. credited to him, and he goes, that's Barry's. <laughs> yeah. That, I, I had Jay Bear on the show, and I was telling him, like, hey, your stuff is starting to become so popular that people are saying it and don't even give you the reference anymore. Because it got that popular, it's almost like Stephen Covey type stuff. Do you know what I mean? It's almost yeah, ridiculous yeah. enough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's true. Yeah. He's, he's, he's got a lot of those, and he's got a lot of those. I, Jay's, I think, that stuck with me was uh, your, your content is uh, the fuel and social marketing is the gasoline. I'm like, nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, it's so funny, though, because you can literally, you know, you can just consume books. Like, I, I you know, I, I, I tear through books. And it's funny because I learned the essence or the origin of, you know, what they're trying to say, but there's only little like nuggets that stick, you know what I mean? And so, you know, when I look at a, at a career like yours and stuff like that, you know, between the book you've written and then stuff like that, you know, I know it sounds weird, but if, if that's what sticks, you've actually made quite the mark because there's undeniable in, in, in the state of digital marketing, right? It's just like so many times we, we've just run into these players that think like, oh, you know what? I'm going to build a good, I'm going to build a good website and then I'm just going to basically just coast from that point on. Like I, we've been building websites for 20 years and you know, they spend time and energy tackling, creating this great project. And then they just think that, you know what, like I build it, they're going to come. And I'm like, no, they're not, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. We, we all learn that lesson. Even if we understood it going in, it becomes reality. But yeah, I, I, I hear you. I mean, you mentioned Stephen Covey, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, his book, First Things First, is, has a million ideas in it. And, you know, you can't write a nonfiction book without a lot of ideas. But you're basically supporting a thesis, a single idea. Like, so I read that book a long time ago. And if you asked me what was in it now, I would say the idea that you put the big rocks in first. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you'd, have to, you'd have to read more about it to actually understand what Stephen meant. But, uh, yeah, every book's got that you talked about jay uh hug mm -hmm. your haters and and um you know he's mm -hmm. he's he's taken uh, simple ideas that when you get negative you know in that case uh, negative criticism um uh, you have to uh, make the most of it and uh utility is you know another uh, way yep. of describing um the value of content marketing yeah yep 
and we had just had him on after he had done talk triggers, which is a word of, with a you know an anthology kind of like to the word of word of mouth. I was trying to remember Martin. the title. That that might be my yeah. favorite. You know, when when I think of that book, you know that chapter yeah. about um, the hundred dollar Philly cheese stick. Yeah, that's <laughs> in my neighborhood. That's, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I could get there in thirty minutes. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's yeah. great. I mean it's it's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I know. Or it sounds but it, but it, it sounds so outlandish. But it's like if yeah. you're going to have a conversation about cheesesteaks or eating in Philadelphia or you know, yep. uh, restaurant uh, shtick, you know, that, that comes yep. to, jumps to mind immediately. Yeah, and so what they do, ironically, is they actually almost serve it as an appetizer, so that everyone can say, hey, you know what, I've had a bite of a hundred dollar cheesesteak. It's like nobody <laughs> really just eats it themselves. You know what I mean? It's it's just a, it's just a talk point. You know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think I would order it, but I'm, I'm, I am a fan of cheesesteaks. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about you know kind of the power of content and what we're seeing right now. And so I think one of the challenges that that we're sort of experiencing is is that you know a lot of people are getting into the content game. They've been getting into the content game, and now it's starting to get to a spot where I joke around and I kind of say it's like. It, it, in certain industries, it's like your content can be like a needle in a stack of needles. So when you think about content, <laughs> what's your creative process to say, hey, you know what? If everyone else is writing me too content, how do I not do that? How do I stand out? How do I, you know, what do I do? Yeah. Whew, that's a tough one. That's a, that's a loaded I, question, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I believe I have a decent answer because, um, you know, the idea of, attempting to create authority and uh, rank on Google and be the answers to the questions that prospects ask is table stakes you know mm -hmm. if, if you don't do it you're you're missing you know and you lose your business to somebody who does so mm -hmm. I think then uh, the question becomes well how do you do it better and mm -hmm. you know mechanically you could do it better by having more collaborators, writing deeper posts, including more media, you know, all these things are sort of like, you know, when you get to the poker table, you know, how do you win the, the hand? But I like to say to clients that the goal of content marketing, sometimes we're talking specifically about blogging, is not to get people to your website. It's to get people to subscribe to your website. Now mm. that, you know, that phenomenon has changed over the years, like nobody even ever caught on to what rss means and you know syndi yeah. content syndication and so forth but there's you know subscribing means you, you gave up your email or in, yeah. you know allowed notifications which has sort of mm -hmm. became you know the, the thing this decade and so you know, how do you do that i think the answer um uh, becomes you do it not just as an educational resource but as an entertainment resource you write mm -hmm stuff that's fun to consume right i have a lot of things to read it sounds like you have a lot of things to read reading is a massive part of my day so i'm selective about it you know and yeah. if you you can inform me but you know that's not good enough to make me a fan of yours you know if you mm -hmm. can entertain me and inform me at the same time that is yeah 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 i mean that and that is one of those things that i think that what happens is, is that you can make the process very mechanical. And what I mean by that is just that specifically with a lot of stuff that Andy does, like I find myself trying to like look at stuff in almost like a cookbook. It's like how I write, how I promote, how I do all this stuff like that. And then all of a sudden you kind of look back and you kind of said, you know, is this thing even enjoyable to read? Because you spend so much time, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, like churning all the stuff out that you figure out, you got to know how to promote it. You got to know how to get peers. You got to know, you know, it's all the stuff like that. You know, like, it's almost like I wish that in some ways you could just kind of say, if this thing gets picked up by nobody or somebody, I'd rather write it in a way that just feels like, you know what, like, this is just something that the average person would want to read. And if you kind of stripped all the other benefits out and just said, hey, you know what, I want to just kind of write this the right way. You know, I just wonder how much of that content would actually stick better than being so formulaic. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, we've established, for better or worse, uh, formulas that make things um, rank. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, um, you know, formulas that make things convert. 
or you know rank yep. click convert kind of a typical mm -hmm. uh, formula for turning a stranger into a prospect yep but um yeah if you think about any beat you know i read a lot about sports uh, i read yeah. a lot about politics uh any beat uh the ones that are uh funny opinionated you know provoking mm -hmm. are the ones that uh, you keep wanting to go back i read cnn's website um, frequently, and uh, the writer named Chris Salisa, who's occasionally on the air, he's mm -hmm. he's cool. He's funny. He writes with a staccato yeah. style, and and you know when mm -hmm. I and I, I could I could recognize his headline a mile away, and I and I read it. Uh, same yeah. with sports writers, and so yeah. you know business business writing is probably less interesting than both of those examples, <laughs> but it gives you an opportunity to stand out because of your personality, you know, which is, is a big part of uh, content marketing. And um, it probably gives you more of an opportunity because you're usually not competing with uh, seasoned great writers with great personality. You know, they're usually following yeah. the formula like we talked about. And yeah. we should we should explain when we say Andy. I don't even know if we've introduced his last name. You know, oh, and, yeah. as, as if he's not famous enough. But I don't think he's so famous <laughs> like, like like you go by Elvis or Frank or something. Yeah, exactly. Andy <laughs> Andy Crestedina um, wrote. Uh, content chemistry, which he revises or updates frequently, and he uh, co-founded Orbit Media Studios, which is a Chicago-based uh, website producer for um, mm -hmm. upper echelon big-time websites. And um, when it comes to learning the ins and outs of attaching content to uh, SEO and analytics and conversion, uh, there might not be a wiser man. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and, a nice, yeah. that's the last nice thing I'm going to say about you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He brings a nerd element to all of that stuff that very few people are capable of doing. I'm not, you know what I mean? Like what I mean by that is. is that he has he a degree do. in Mandarin Chinese. <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievable. Like, I, you know, he's very hard to copy. Like he makes things sound simple and then you try to copy and try to do what he does. And I, I was thinking just, about Andy when we were talking he, about like, you know. Uh, yeah using the formula content chemistry is formulaic you know he's he's yep. a left brain um who's um oddly disguised as a right brain because he's so smart he's figured out how to write fun stuff you know and he's got his writing mm -hmm. is is um you know it, it's, it's obvious when you read it it came from him which is a mark of a great writer yeah yeah well you know we were talking before as well is uh someone else that we both admire is marcus sheridan um Tell me a little bit about your history of Marcus Sheridan, because he has a lot of high praise for, for what you've done as well. Are you allowed to say that about yourself, or do I got to say it for you? <laughs> well, I don't have to say it about myself, because you did. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I wish I could say that it, it hasn't been a long time since I talked to Marcus. I, I, it has. I, I used to talk to him now and then, and he's a comrade, but uh, mostly he's um, you know a source of inspiration. He's He's way younger than me, but it was, mm. I read Inbound Marketing, you know, by HubSpot, mm -hmm. which if you haven't yep. read, you should, although, you know, it's, I don't I don't know how often it's been updated. It was like, they were yeah, it's been a new, new ideas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, there were new ideas then and they're, they're not now, you know, yeah. essentially that, you know, you need to create content and, and do social and so forth to, um, you know, succeed in this new thing called Inbound Marketing. Um, yep. And then I wanted to um, sponge up to the degree that I could with other books and conferences uh, as much as I could about um, what, you know, the, not, not that inbound marketing and content marketing are the exact same thing, but they certainly, um, you know, mm -hmm. are close relatives of each other. And so I started going to conferences, and the first one I went to was called Blog World. It ha has a different name now, but I did my homework uh, mm -hmm. before I went to figure out who I wanted to spend my time listening to, and the person that I most wanted to listen to was Marcus Sheridan and you know I didn't mm -hmm. know his name until I was on that blog world website and then I went mm -hmm. to hear him speak and man so much stuff sunk in and his lessons and then I I, I sort of um, uh, tracked him down afterwards and uh, you know, shook his hand and 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 you know became his his friend and then he went on to you know be a source mm -hmm. for me and answer questions and then he said something about how um i was as good or better than anybody in the in the world of um i guess you you sort of refer to this um of writing content about content marketing so yeah. i am forever forever indebted to him but yeah i learned so much i don't, I don't know if you want to go there but you know with the things yeah. he said and the way he presented have you seen him live yeah 
Yeah. yeah. Well, no, let me rephrase that. I'm sorry. He, he did a really large symposium for the people at Impact, and it's literally like a three or four hour course that's all on YouTube. And uh, just in preparation for the show, I just watched all four hours, and then I read his book, and um, there's just a lot there. But he also yeah. has the gift of taking complex things and making them seem very simple. You know what I mean? Well, um, he, he also has the gift of speaking. That's why I asked you that. I mean, you know, so yeah. I, some people speak well and are comfortable on stage, and some people don't. And uh, he's pretty amazing. And by, you know, by the end of the speech, you're usually not only informed, but you're kind of touched. Yeah, he's got that like Southern Baptist feel, even though he's not a Baptist, but he's got that, you know what I mean? He's, he's yeah, a well-behaved so man. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, now one of the things I like about Marcus, um, when I had him on the show and just from his book, is, you know, what you're really trying to search for is it kind of this tr trust barrier. And what I mean by that is, is that, you know, people are going to buy from people that you know, like, and trust. But the problem is, is that, almost everybody who comes to your website or read your content or what, looking at your product usually has a level of intrepidation or basically they're saying, you know what, I ha we always come up a little skeptical. But like yeah. what he says is if you can use content to remove as much fear as possible, to be as upfront and answer questions that you're kind of actually even hiding from, you know what I mean? Like such as your price or such as, hey, you know what, what are things that your system doesn't solve and things like that when you alleviate all of the fear, the only thing left is trust. And it's, it's a bold, I know it sounds weird, but it's a very bold approach because if I were to go to my clients and literally ask them the question, like, why shouldn't I work with you? I don't think they would, you know, I, I've been in the room where they, they wouldn't like that very much. But yeah. when you know where the poison's at, that's where great content is born. Ooh, you know that's I mean? a good one. That's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. You gotta write that down. <laughs> when you know where the poison is, that's a good one. Yeah, Marcus's yeah. lessons are are simple. He, you know, he, his book's called "They Ask You Answer," and yep. uh, he's been saying that forever. You know, it kind of made yep. him internet famous, uh, and he couldn't sell that title. It's a weird title to a book publisher, mm -hmm. but he ultimately did, and now it's. It works. It's simple. It's ultimately easy to understand. I imagine if you know, even if after you read the intro, you get it, and that's what he speaks about, and that's what he believes in. And you know, yeah. his story, as you know, and I don't know if the audience does, is um, you know, re um, traces back to the um, demise of his um, pool company, uh, Riverside Endless, Pools. Yeah, yeah. It's like, and no, I think this is River, Endless Pools and no. No, I think river, pool, river, river pools and spas. River pools. And okay, spas, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. I'll yeah, buy that one. That. Yeah. So that's um. <laughs> we'll, we'll go with that's, that. <laughs> that's that's based in Virginia. You know, you can't really have an e-commerce pool company, so it, they can't like yeah. send a pool to me in California, and so um, you know, it was uh, the recession of 2008. 20, mm -hmm. 2008, his company was kind of yeah. eating shit, and yeah. um, you know, and people weren't um, you know extracting uh, money from their uh, homes to uh, invest in uh, home improvements like pools, and uh, he discovered HubSpot and he discovered um, content marketing, and uh, he took it to the extreme, and he did what you just mentioned. He answered not only basic questions because he sells uh, fiberglass pools i guess mm -hmm. him, and his, yep. him and his partners do so you know not everybody buys those so people have questions how does that compare with the above ground pool how does that compare with a concrete pool and you know mm -hmm. and so uh you know the the um lesson that uh, he learned is you're unique uh, and bold and interesting if you answer the tough questions you know what's good about them what's bad about them how does it compare to the competition you know most most marketers like ooh, we don't mention the competition yeah. you know um, yeah. what is it, you know what does it cost um, the, the first time I ever saw Marcus I'll try to tell this story quickly uh, he was making a case that it's important to address price on your website and so it was a room full of about 200 people and he yeah. said, uh, how many people have blogs? And most of them raised their hand. He goes, how many people publish information about um, uh, the price of your products? And oh, most people put their hands down. And he goes, sir, if you don't mind me calling on you, he goes, uh, why doesn't your company uh, um, publish information about the price of your products? Isn't, does it, has anybody ever bought your product without asking what it cost? You know? yeah. And he said, uh, he goes, oh, well, we sell enterprise software. And in the enterprise software world, you know, there's a million variables and how many seats and what features you want and you know, the length of the contract and blah, 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 blah. And Marcus goes, well, that's 
that's the answer to the question. You should publish that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, we're we're in the process of writing our our price page. I mean, I I think one of the things that he does though is if you read his book, he actually breaks down how to answer about price because I think that the question isn't always simple and what you want to be able to do and the mechanics of how you explain your prices. I mean, I, it seems smart enough to convince me. It's on our it's on our um, editorial calendar to write it. Yeah, sure. he would know. And his company uh, that I imagine he probably still co-owns, probably doesn't yep. spend most of his days dealing with it, um, is an example. But it's not the only example. I mean, another lesson from Marcus is that uh, you don't, no matter how boring you think, you know, what you make or sell is, um, you know, it's not boring to the people that buy it. You know, yeah. and so you can, you know, he 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 uh, believes and has proven that uh, answering uh, prospects' questions, um, mm -hmm. otherwise known as content marketing, is um, you know is integral to every company in the world, mm -hmm. or can be, yeah. or can be at least. Yeah, I mean that's or, that's the thing. So I mean, how long have you been? When did you start your marketing career? I'm not telling you. <laughs> Short, shortly out of college, let's say the late yeah. '80s. Yeah. So I, I mean, I'm, I'm 21 years in, and I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm one of the old men in the business. In the aspect of, I have higher kids that we were doing a thing, and I was asking them a trivia thing, and I was asking them like lines from Jaws, and nobody in the room had even seen Jaws. And I was like, I am so old. You know yeah, I nobody mean? has seen Jaws. Uh, uh, yeah. It's still trending on Netflix. Uh, I know. Well, I, I, I certainly uh, got yeah. you beat, son. Um, mm -hmm. 21 years ago was uh, the turn of the century. And yeah. um, I, I, I like to think, you know, I, I used to write for Cisco and Netscape and Sun Microsystems, who are, is a distant memory, you know, the people that made the internet yep. possible and that was 1995 you know back Oof. then um you know yeah. i think even more obscure than jaws would be america online and you <laughs> bought a, a disc and you stuck it in your yep. computer and it gave you the ability to communicate with other people and join chat rooms and stuff and um so uh, you are i guess you're a millennial but you're uh, a child of the digital age and i, I like yeah. to say that i I, I've been doing this before the digital age. You know, I, I was a yeah. copywriter and senior copywriter and, and uh, creative yeah. director, and so my job was to make brochures and ads. You know, yeah. it was a yeah. it was a lot less complicated, and um, we um, weren't forced yeah. to answer for results because we didn't know, know what they were. <laughs> yep. When I first started the business, when I first started the business, one of the things that was very important to our website is that we can make it printable. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, when you, you get to a one with black background, you're like, "Holy yeah. crap! I'm, I'm going to go through a whole you know, ink cartridge to, with this yeah. one damn website." Yeah, it was called CSS Print, and it was yeah. like very few companies could do it because we felt like we needed to print it out. It was just, you know, just hilarious. But I think one of the things that you were saying about Marcus is, is that I've been doing this for 21 years, and now I feel like my salespeople that jump on are just excited to sell the product that we've always sold. And I'm always trying to sell something <laughs> that we don't even do right now that we could do because, you know, doing the same thing for 21 years, you're always trying to push the envelope and trying to get more fun out of, <laughs> out of your day, you know? And so rather than always batting from my sweet spot or, you know what I mean? Like hitting from my sweet spot, I'm always trying to push the envelope and do new stuff. We're getting into, AI, we're getting into programmatic advertising and things like that. And yeah. you know, it's funny because my business partner is like, it's old to you, but it's new to them. And so you have to like take a step back and just realize that, you know what, this is the first time they're hearing about how content marketing will transform their business. Or maybe, you know, maybe or maybe not, but for the most part, they, it's the first time they've heard it from us, you know? Yeah. And so it's, it's funny because it's very true. I mean, you and I have been on this boat long enough where it's almost like, <laughs> it's almost like old hat. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was, well, it, what you said is interesting in two ways. I admire the, um, you know, forging forth um, beyond the status quo idea that you're trying to apply to your company. But um, yeah, that idea that um, like if you're, if I'm writing a piece actually right now for uh, get response 
who yep. is um, a marketing automation uh, provider, you know, email company that's expanded into all things marketing automation, and it's about um, content marketing for e-commerce. They're you know they they have plenty of e-commerce mm -hmm. companies and they're trying to you know make it a bigger part of their um, product or their client portfolio. And so you know, do you start by answering the question? what is it you know what's content marketing and when you get to email do you, you know, explain that you know it's not dead when you get to social media do you explain you know how important it is to build relationships and influence and stuff it sounds pretty old and boring to you and i who have been reading about it for yeah. 17 years but um yeah it's 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 still new to a lot of people yeah yeah i mean it's one of those things where <laughs> even you telling reminding me to say people's last names because I'm reading their books and I just kind of say them by the first name and then like other people in the room are like, Andy, is that your brother? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so if you say Joe, if you say Joe, yeah, who's yeah, Joe? Joe Blitzy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's funny. That's funny. So let's talk a little bit about, we've t we're giving everybody else the credit. Ben, yeah, 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 we are. Yeah. Let's talk about you. Oh, well, let's talk about me. All right. <laughs> All right. So. Um, first off, let's talk about road to recognition. All right. right. You know, you wrote this book, you're talking about personal branding. You know, how was that born? How'd you, how'd you come up with that idea and that concept? Uh, a little bit of luck, a little bit of research. I, um, I can't say that I consume uh, marketing and nonfiction books as much as you, uh, mm -hmm. right now, but there was a okay. time when I did, I always had yeah. two or three open and often or occasionally finish them <laughs> and um i was examining being a, really a freelancer you know film and creatives a one-man show uh when yep. i get uh, a big gig uh i manage other writers but uh they're not on the payroll they're freelancers mm -hmm. and so i was trying to examine uh, among the many topics that I was creating content about, and I was really high on uh, a now antiquated thing called SlideShare, um, mm -hmm. which uh, I became kind of popular on. Um, and uh, I was just looking for a new topic after new topic, and I read, I started reading stuff by uh, Dan Schwabel and uh, Michael Hyatt, and um, I saw a speech by, uh, I'm going to forget her name, I'm going to have to get back to you. I'm looking yeah. for the personal branding category of my bookcase. Um, there was a lot of, there was a lot of uh, good books about um, the importance of personal branding. And uh, that topic fascinated me. I, I was, again, I was aligning, trying to um, line up like, what, what, what have I achieved in my career? What do I know how to do? And in the, in, in a short amount of time, like between 2011, when I started blogging and 2014 or 15, I was writing for, all the most popular uh, marketing po uh, marketing publications, and uh, I was occasionally speaking at conferences. I was meeting, you know, the many people we've talked about so far at those conferences, and you know, rubbing elbows with the right people, and um, getting asked to be on shows like this. And I thought, personal branding. You know, um, if you did a search for for Barry Feldman, which is not an uncommon name, you know, there's a lot of people in show business and uh, lawyers yeah. and stuff. Um, I every 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 um, every one of the listings on the first SERP search engine result page uh, was me. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'm doing some stuff right, you know. And um, nice. what I'm doing what I'm doing right is now called personal branding. Um, Tom Peters, yeah. who is a famous uh, author, uh, introduced the term uh, in mm -hmm. an extensive article he wrote for uh, somebody. I was going to say Forbes, but it's not. Uh, man. When I get any younger, my memory's getting a little foggy. Yeah. <laughs> but trust me, Tom Peters gave birth to the term, and uh, yeah. I made an, an infographic. I was the author of an infographic, and I had a, a partner in crime who was uh, the kind of the producer slash uh, designer, and it was called the A to Z Guide to um, Personal Branding. It wasn't the first time I used that A to Z Guide trick, and I I used it literally. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't mean like the complete guide. It mean like meant like we're gonna yeah. I'm gonna give you a tip that. It starts with A, and I'm going to finish with a tip that starts with Z. And it became the most uh, viral, popular uh, thing I ever mm. wrote. I was, like, um, known for that. And yeah. um, I was interviewed a lot, and it was fun. And um, I became, I guess, uh, an expert on the topic, or perceived to be. <laughs> and then uh, Seth uh, Price, who um, ultimately... Mm 
the guy that I, I was talking about that helped me create the infographic, I don't generally design them, um, uh, recognized that our, our little claim to fame had run its course over, the, over about a year. And he said, now it shall be a book. And I said, yes, it shall. Let's do it. That, that's wow. the answer to your question. Yeah, yeah. How long did it take? How long did it take you to do that? I'm writing my first book now and shocked at how time intensive it's been. It took me about two and a half years. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm. I mean, it to. wasn't a priority. I mean, I think some people that yeah. write books, uh, they make it a priority, and if they, you know, are used to getting up at 7 a.m., they get up at 5 a.m. and they commit those hours to writing a book. To me, yep. it was like I got to it when I got to it. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's just trying to figure out where it's going to fit in the landscape of how I want to sell my services. You know, a lot of, a lot of what we're trying to do is tell, we're going to, the book is devised to tell a story through a narrative. You ever, um, you ever read a book called Built to Sell? You know, he tells the story about a logo company and how the logo company basically sold the, sold the business. And I, I remember some of the ideas and the concepts in Built to Sell, but what I really liked is how he basically taught through a narrative. And so, that's what that's what the book we're building is here. It's just basically it's a company's journey, and they got real popular um, because they were picked up by something that was similar to Simon Sinek. And then, as their star would fall, or basically as as their glory starts to fade, they say, "Hey, you know what? To keep the dream alive, we're going to have to get serious about marketing." And it's their journey of finding an agency and what the agency teaches them and how they grow and stuff like that. Yeah. And so, it's, it's a cool been, it's, it's a cool been, idea. It's a cool ambition. I mean, it's um, yeah. I mean, some people uh, want to burn through it fast, and some people don't. Uh, kind of depends on you know whether it's a priority or not. But you know, the truth is, it's not going to make you rich, and it's not going to make you famous. Uh, or yeah. I mean, at least the odds say so. You know, but we've yeah, been talking sure. about Marcus and um, you know Stephen Covey and stuff, and so it's not like there aren't celebrities in the nonfiction book writing thing. But you know, it, it's it's not uh, a ticket to uh, stardom like some people believe it is and, and it's yeah. not easy and you yep. know you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna outline it you're gonna you're probably gonna try to write it in chronological order uh, you're gonna have chapters that you're struggling with and ultimately you're yep. gonna rewrite it and then when you think it's yeah. done you're probably gonna want to get an editor it's it's a pain <laughs> it is yeah that's that's exactly where we're at this is like i feel like i've we're in the stage of like, I've written it once, now I feel like I gotta rewrite it all over again. Not because the content's out of date, but the problem with the narrative, you also have to have dialogue and you gotta have charm and you gotta have, you wanna be funny but not too funny and you wanna like, have the characters likable and you know, there's, it's actually a little bit more involved than just a book of nonfiction of teaching. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, I know what you mean, but that, the road to recognition is, is not that. I mean, the road to recognition has, um, in addition to 26 topics and 26 chapters, it has 26 guest stars, um, mm. which was kind of a cool idea. Um, yeah. People that had written books on that topic or you know been known to uh, create interesting yep. content about that topic, like S is for speaking or P is for podcasting. But <laughs> um, ultimately, uh, I, I wrote in the prologue to that book, I don't care what order you read it in or if you read the thing from start to finish or if you read one chapter of it. If you wanted to learn about a topic, but what you found if you fast forwarded mm -hmm. to that uh, chapter was uh, blog style how to on whatever that chapter was about. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so it's a whole lot more actionable then. Yeah, it's it's almost like a yeah. reference guide. I mean, that's not to say it, it has like something yep. like 130 reviews, which is is fun to say, and they're fun to review because yep. they're positive reviews. But sure. um, yeah, people talk first that you know they use it as a reference guide, but they also talk about uh, how much they, uh, they got their highlighter out because they learned so much, and so. Um, and and they also talk about uh, you know it's it's a fun read. I I, I when I write, mm -hmm. um, uh, I write with. Uh, the the per only personality I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't try to be someone else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me finish because we're getting to about that time. Let me finish about one of the blogs you wrote, or at least your strategies. And I, I have it in my notes here, but I don't have the title for it. But it, it literally talks about the number thirty. All right, in between thirty blog posts, thirty videos, thirty podcasts. Da 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 da. Can you unpack that? What were you? You know what? What was your angle for that, and, and you know, what do you, what do you sort of prescribe? <laughs> uh, again, we got to credit uh, our man Marcus Sheridan. It, it was born of uh, 
the uh, they ask you answer idea and it mm-hmm. was um, I think I knew you were going to ask me about that so I opened it it's called okay it's called the most effective content tip ever so okay. hopefully nobody's ever written that same headline so if you hear me now <laughs> and want to want to uh, read it to the search <laughs> for the most effective content tip ever so I, I don't claim what isn't mine so I talk about uh, um, Marcus and I'm reading the first subhead, and it says, answer your prospect's top 30 questions. That's it. Do it, and enjoy the magic. <laughs> now, um, <laughs> I, I'll expand on that, and um, it's not like, I, I guess I was trying to add value to Marcus's idea. So Marcus's idea yeah. didn't include the number 30. He might have said, you know, start with mm-hmm. 30. I don't, I don't remember. He might have said yep. start with 50. But the idea is, you know, you're, you're starting content marketing or you're revisiting an unsuccessful content marketing effort and uh, you're scratching your head, you know, where do we go? Hopefully you've aston- you know, established uh, personas and, and buyer cycles and stuff like that. But, you know, the tougher questions are probably going to become, uh, what do we write about? And so mm-hmm. uh, the answer is, you know, you write about uh, the type of things people are going to type into Google, the questions they have. You know, the, it's pretty easy to get your questions answered these days. And you know, the question that you have mm-hmm. to ask yourself as a, a marketer is, you know, are they, are they going to get the answers from your competition or you? And so, uh, you know, hearkening back to his idea about you know answering every conceivable question that anybody could ask about fiberglass pools, uh, he proved how it worked. And so. Um, you know, he said, so where do those, where do those questions uh, come from? And the answer should be, uh, you know, those that sell, you know, so we're starting to talk about uh, um, marketing alignment, sales and marketing alignment, and ultimately a phrase that caught on called sales enablement, where the marketers help the salespeople um, with content that answers prospects questions. Um, and so ask them, ask the um, customer service people, you know, these days you could, um, uh, call on digital resources. I suppose it's not irrelevant anymore, but a great uh, way to um, come up with content ideas is to check your email outbox. You know, because yeah. all day long you answer questions. You're like, oh, maybe I should yeah. make a, a, a extensive version of that answer. Yeah. Um, chat would allow you to do that. Social media would allow you to do that. I mean, mm-hmm. doing research is a little easier than it used to be. You know, it's, you know that's an understatement. Yeah. It's a lot easier than it used to be. Okay, so yep. so I, I kind of arbitrarily chose the number 30 uh, in an effort mm-hmm. to add value to Marcus's lesson to say, here's how you can go from zero I guess I should say to 90, <laughs> you know, but most people <laughs> say zero to 100. How can you make a lot of content that appeals to a lot of people in a short period of time? And mm-hmm. this is not, this is not um, magic, but, you know, it, it does take resources and commitment. And so my idea was you identify those 30 questions and you write 30 articles. Mm-hmm. So you're going to be populating your blog rather quickly you know i don't know about over 30 days but maybe over 90 days or whatever uh, the numbers sure. are almost almost aren't that um, important mm-hmm. and then not everybody likes to read content so uh, the two other uh, you know media types that people enjoy most are audio and video and so if you mm-hmm. take those same ideas which you've already done the work for and make them into podcasts and video casts or youtube videos or you know, whatever, and that video is a pretty flexible mm-hmm. medium. Um, you have 90 pieces of content that uh, only took the actual effort of researching and writing uh, to create yeah. 30. So, you know, do people do that? No. And, you know, is it easy to do out of the gate as a beginner? No. You know, you, you mentioned it's taken us like six months to actually make this interview happen. So, you know, video <laughs> comes with s- scheduling and coordination and complications and after it, you know, editing and uploading and promoting and so forth. So, yeah, so it does take some resources. But the general idea is, um, you know, answer your customers' questions and then uh, figure out the shortcuts to repurposing it for uh different media because people uh, consume different media you know in the ways they like mm-hmm. like my, my wife's really into audiobooks yeah. and i've never made it to the end of an audiobook <laughs> uh, okay yeah, that's fun. yeah yeah now um yeah it is very funny because you know i um i talk about this quite a bit we do this thing called quasi which is questions with answers and simple information and so what i try to do is i try to i take those questions and i try to give the bite-sized answer and then after the bite-sized answer, you can click read more to get the full-size answer. 
And so I do the same thing you're doing, but I also take it one step earlier just because some people just, just want the facts. You know what I mean? And um, if you answer just enough questions in short form, you'd be surprised at how your name you know, sticks in the top of the mind when they're looking for products and services and stuff like that. So this is if very you, cool. It's yeah, if you did that 90 or 30 times three thing that we just talked about and uh, you were yeah. looking for bite size, let, let's say it was like a fairly complex B2B topic, um, yep. you know, you would be, you could be busy uh, uh, promoting that stuff on LinkedIn and Twitter, you know, for uh, ever. <laughs> you yeah, know? I know. It's crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, look, we're getting to about to be at the end of our time here, but I want to thank you so much for joining us. Uh, for our listeners who you know uh, who uh, want to know more about um, you know Feldman Creative, where where would they find you, and how would they get out, how would they reach you? Well, my website's FeldmanCreative.com, shockingly, and uh, <laughs> I'm 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 here and there on social media. I think you know about uh, me being the author of three books, one which we dug into um, because yep. I'm on Amazon like every other author, so you find a author page there, and then. Um, we never really got into guest blogging. I'm not sure if we planned to, but um, yeah, I, I, think I, I can't. Time. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I, th I think it's in the road to recognition, and uh, guest blogging is one of the reasons why people know my name. You know, I've written for yep. a fairly long list of marketing publications, and so if you just do a search for my name and spell it correctly, you'll, you'll find <laughs> uh, <laughs> hundreds of things yeah. that I've I've written. So, but a uh, good place to start is my website, as you might imagine. Awesome, awesome. Well, Barry, you are. You are a genius, pal. I, I'm a big fan of, of the work you've done, and I really appreciate you jumping on. Uh, and to, uh, to our listeners, uh, it is our goal, like I mentioned in the beginning of the show, to have the best and brightest minds in the content and digital marketing world. And Barry, you are absolutely one of them. So thank you again for joining us. And um, to our listeners, uh, please like, subscribe, uh, and we'll try to, to, try to pack uh, your week with, with guests like Barry and others that are going to rock your world. So thanks again, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> you might want to edit that last passage, but yeah, <laughs> I, I thank you, and that was very flattering what you said there. Thanks, Chris. You got it. Thanks again. Thank you for watching this video. What I wanted to do now is share something with you that we believe is very special. What we wanted to share is something we call the Ferritic Unique Process. What you'll see on this page is this is our entire roadmap that we've built over the last 21 years. We implement this process for all of our inbound marketing clients, and we believe that if you implement some of these strategies into your own marketing, you're gonna have tremendous results. We've developed this page to be not only in video format, but also text and chapter format as well. When done effectively, this process is gonna help your organization build marketing systems that generate leads, nurture leads into clients, and then convert those clients into raving fans of your product, service, mission, and vision. If you have any questions or concerns about anything that you've read, or you would like to kind of walk through this with one of our specialists, please reach out to us. You can do that at info at So once again, the domain to find out our unique process is ferratechuniqueprocess.com.